Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel and in this video we are going to discuss a very important interview question and that is to design your own reduce method that we already have in our ES6. This question is very important for someone having an experience of around two to four years. Uh, so without wasting any further time, let's go to our code runner and check out how that works. But before that, if you find value from these content, then do hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button as well because your one like encourages me a lot to bring a valuable content for my audience. So without wasting any further time, let's go to our code runner. Okay, so here we have an array which I want to reduce and I want to get the sum of the numbers that are there in this array. So how the typical reduce method work? We have a reduce we uh, it, it it has a function that takes two argument one is the accumulator that's the initial value and second is the item that is the current item and then uh, you want to do whatever you want to uh, how you want to reduce it so basically i want to return the sum i'll be doing accumulator equals accumulator plus item and the initial value of this accumulator will go here so so the initial value of the sum is going to be zero so you'll be passing zero here let me uh, save this sum right here and let's console it. So if you'll console it, you'll get undefined because you need to return your accumulator. So whatever you have accumulated, you have to return it from your reduce method. So you get six. So that's how a typical reduce method works. I hope that you have some understanding of this, but how to create your own reduce method. So here I can see that there are two main things, a function that actually performs the reduce uh, operation. Basically, whatever you want to do. So this is the function that's here, that's, that the reduce function is taking a method or a function which takes two parameter. One is accumulator and what, uh, another one is the current item. And then it performs the operation accordingly. So this is the function that actually performs the reduce operation, which we call as reducer. And the second is your actual reduce method. So your actual reduce method is this one. So again, what it takes, it takes one reducer. What do we mean by reducer? We mean that a simple function that actually performs this uh, operation that we actually wanted to perform for this case it's sum right so this is actually performing uh, the sum operation and returning the final value so we need one I reducer and what's the other thing it need it need initial value so initial value is for this case is sum so the initial value of sum is zero but let's say you want to flatten an array so for that case the initial value uh, would be an empty array. So currently you don't have anything in the array. You want to push things up according to uh, your reducer. So according to what you want to do here, you want to push things into array, but currently your array is empty, right? So what is the initial value of your accumulator is? And the third thing is you want the current item. So to want the current item, you need to take the entire array so that you can loop over the array and you can get the current item. So we need two basic things here. So first is our reducer. So let's say for this case, we have a sum reducer, right? So sum reducer take two things. It takes one accumulator and it takes one current item. So let me take one accumulator and one current item. And this is simply a function. Let's take it as a arrow function. And what it does, it just adding the accumulator with our current item so this is the function of a reducer so that is the sum reducer in our case now we have to move on to our actual reduce method which is again a method for us and we have already discussed that it needs three things it takes one reducer that actually performs the operation it takes one initial value and it takes one array. So uh, let's just take this value, initial value in some another variable. Why? Because every time your initial value will be updated. 
not the initial value basically but whatever the accumulator you have so currently you have zero but once you will add one to it the accumulator will be one then you will add two in one so you'll get two plus one equals three now you have in your accumulator three and you want to add three plus three six so final answer will be six so you want to save the updated value uh, uh, here so up you can also call it as accumulator as well which is the updating every time it is updating currently it is initial value but every time this will be updated and now simply we need our current item so how can we get our current item you know the drill we have to loop over the array and what is uh, what's the current value it's the current item right here and you can get it like that now you have the current item you also have the initial value or the, or, or the accumulator per se you have that also and you have your reducer method as well so here what you will have to do you will have to call reducer and reducer needs two parameter one is accumulator and second is your current item so accumulator is we have accumulator here we will pass accumulator and second is current item we have current value here will pass current value here so reducer is your sum reducer right for this case we will be doing it like this so reduce your first uh, thing is reducer and in this case you have created your reducer which is your sum reducer like that the second value it takes is initial value which is zero and third it takes is array and the array we have defined here so it takes this so this is how you will call it so uh, you have accumulator right here and you have current value right here you will be passing that and saving that in saving that back into the accumulator and eventually what you have to do is you have to return your accumulator that we are doing here so once your loop finishes that's once once you have looped over the entire array then you can return your accumulator from here and you are calling it like this so you can save your sum like this and let's console our sum finally it says array um, sorry it just takes one uh, so it is six and six so first it takes six from the typical reduce method that we have in our year six and again we create our own reduce method and we get the same result back so what does it take let's summarize it you need one function basically that is a reducer that's actually performing the operation which is like this second is your initial value and third is your current item so you get your sum reducer from here you get two values accumulator and current item and it's just summing up all these and then you need your actual reduce method it takes three things so you save the initial value in an accumulator you loop over the array that you get here from the parameters and then whatever the current value is you are saving that and finally you are passing this into your reducer which takes two values accumulator and current item and you are passing it down every time until and unless there is some value in the array and once you have looped over the entire array you will have the final result and you can return it back. So that's it. That's that's how you can design your own reduce method. This is a very frequently asked question and a very important one to actually understand the basics behind reduce method, how actually the ES6 reduce method work behind the hood. So I hope that's clear. If you like this video, do hit the like button and subscribe as well. I'll see you soon in my next video. Thank you so much.